Welcome to this uh, meeting of Huntersfield Council, number 4453. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet tonight and the waters that surround us. And I pay my respects to their elders past and present. Thank you. Please have a seat. I'm oh, sorry, one moment. Let's have a prayer. Um, we thank you, Lord, for the honour of being called by our fellow citizens to this office of honour and trust. Give us grace, diligently and honourably, free from private interest or prejudice, to discharge the duties entrusted to us, to the common good and in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please have a seat. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any apologies, but uh, Councillor Williams has advised us he's running a little bit late, so he is on the way, he's not far away. Unfortunately, we really can't hold the meeting up uh, for everyone to arrive. So we have uh, six of the councillors are here and one on the way. Are there any uh, declarations of interest? Um, so ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important issue tonight but because it affects the long-term viability of our council. And that long-term viability of our council has other implications. So we have three speakers this evening, Mr. Jenkin, Mr. Perry Oakham, and Dr. Sharp. So Mr. Jenkin, would you like to address us? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and councillors. I think I might read this out so that I get it within three minutes. Would that be Could a I, remind you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were about to remind me, so I will. I strongly support option three, which is the rate peg of 2.7% plus community facilities, 4% or 4.04%, plus the operational of 3%. In my view, so do many other members of the community. Those that know the true facts. It is clear, however, from submissions favouring option one, that there are residents who are unaware of some or all of the following facts. One, rate peg. New South Wales is the only state that has rate peg. It's an artificial state control over what monies local councils can raise to meet their community's needs and aspirations. Rate pegging for a number of years has been kept at around CPI, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, while actual costs well exceed that amount. That's relevant costs. It is in fact designed to control local government, state control over local government and its financial capacity. Second fact in relation to rates, and not many people know this, I think, Mr. Mayor. Rates across New South Wales remain at relatively modest levels compared to other states because of the rate peak. The majority of residents' rates in the Hunters Hill municipality are lower than for similar properties in neighbouring areas. Now that message, Barry Smith, the former general manager, tried to get that message out, put it in various reports. It is in fact a fact, but you'll see in a lot of the submissions saying, oh, the rates here are the highest in the world and so forth. So there is a need for further education, obviously, on these matters. Three, cost shifting. The government continues to offload its responsibilities onto local councils without any or sufficient recompense. This it has done in Hunters Hill, or to Hunters Hill, so that now 15% of our income is used in this way which is a disgrace. Every responsible body is against it. The local government association, you through, you name it. They say that why should the state government be putting its responsibilities on the local councils? It should take that responsibility. Four, councils targeted. 
The government put councils. Is that so? Um, move to extend Councillor McLaughlin and Councillor Sanderson. Everybody in favour? Please go ahead. It's two pages. Four, councils targeted. The government, this government, put councils through a lengthy, time consuming, and damaging process over forced amalgamations, including the necessity of a court case before then admitting that it got it wrong. To use the words of the Premier when she was asked, we got it wrong, absolutely wrong. It hasn't repaid any of those costs to this or any other council that I know of, nor has it paid the reasonable costs of the court case it lost that it was ordered to pay over a year ago, and in my view is deliberately not paying, to put more screws onto this council and other councils. It also targeted councils who were challenging in court, for good reason, as we now know, but it targeted them. That's somewhere in workplace called bullying or intimidation. But if, if a government does it, I suppose it thinks it's good policy. Preventing them from applying, that's preventing us from applying for our special rate variations, which we had already there, accepted by the community as being a good thing. Five, we've heard about Gladesville a lot, and I see a couple of people from Gladesville behind me, so I make this submission very deliberately for them to listen to and to understand. The state government controls planning. The state government has stripped away from local communities and councils any real say or control over strategic planning and decision making. This applies to sections of Gladesville near Victoria Road, where the government has a deliberate policy of overdevelopment and lack of infrastructure. A deliberate policy. It can't be construed in any other way because it's not doing anything in relation to the parking and overcrowding and everything else at all. No plans. Overpopulation, increased densities, traffic congestion, noise and pollution. The fault for all those in Glazeville lies directly with the state government through bad planning laws that admitted in 2013 were bad and bad policies. And unfortunately for us, the minister who's responsible for that is our own local member, Anthony Roberts. Six, Hunters Hill fit for the future. I part in the IPART process recently found that Hunters Hill Council... Uh, move to extend, Councillor Cross or Councillor Sanderson, all in favour? I part recently found that Hunters Hill Council was sustainable and efficient. Indeed, it passed all financial criteria. However, if you didn't pass 250,000 for your population for your local government area, the government dishonestly, and quite dishonestly, said, oh, well, you failed. It passed every financial criteria. There's been an attack in some of the submissions on council's uh, performance in relation to financially. And I think you should take that uh, as an insult, frankly, because I've watched various councils over a period of time before in relation to that. The fact is that this council, right in front of me, the previous one and many before, have managed the council's budget and finances carefully, prudently and professionally, including the staff. With all this rate pegging and cost shifting going on, they have done an incredibly good job. No one's perfect, of course. I could also pick out things, but that's my summary of it. It does share facilities. Some people are totally unaware of the shared facilities that you have uh, with other councils uh, where it's appropriate, and that is on insurance, waste, library, and so forth. Number eight, we've only got a couple to go. Number eight is community's expectations. The Hunters Hill community has time and time and time again in surveys and submissions indicated that it wants its public facilities and buildings, its parks and bushland, 
its roads and footpaths and its services to be well maintained and cared for. The council in fact manages $209 million worth of assets. It needs the special rate variations to achieve community expectations and to be financially prudent and responsible. Nine, submissions and research. Many of the submissions against the state variation in favour of option one give reasons that are not correct and are not factual. Submissions in favour indicate reasons that are and a level of greater understanding for those who actually said yes, we should have variations. But the key lies in the iris research, professionally done, with checks and balances. It's all set out there in the report for people to read about that. The summary of findings states that there is relatively strong ratepayer support for the introduction of a special rate variation levy to help, help maintain community infrastructure at an acceptable level. Let me just quote from page 34. The importance of maintaining infrastructure is recognised by ratepayers with 78% rating it important or very important to maintain existing and build new infrastructure. <coughs> there it is, actually across the board. No difference in Gladesville to the rest. I saw that in the report, which is really interesting. No difference in the results in Gladesville to the rest of Hubbers Hill in that. So the conclusion is that there is in fact strong community support for option three and uh, for the council uh, taking that option and it's certainly one that I support. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, stay with us just for a moment, please. Councillors, questions of Mr. Jenkins. Councillor Collins. Um, Mr. Jenkins, how many of the people making submissions for option three have you had contact with in the consultation period? How many submissions? Hey. Is there some reason for this question? Oh, absolutely. Am I, am I supposed to kind of influence everybody? Am I? Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm trying to get at. So. Well, then that is that is both shameful and totally inappropriate for you to say, but I'll answer it because I expect... Well, on Monday it was all of them, so yeah, I'm just yeah, asking the question yeah, today. Yeah, okay. Um, how many have I... Uh, let me have a look. I'll ask the question. I'd better give the best answer I can. I think... Most of them I didn't know, I have to say. Uh, Dr. Hugh Hazards was an interesting one. Uh, well, I think I know Russell, uh, Russell Young. No, just option three. Yeah. That I spoke to about option three. That made a submission for option three? Well, it's set out in the report how many how many did. Yeah, 14. Uh, but, but the point that I'm making, if I can answer you this way, is that when you look at the reasons, if you actually read the summary, you'll find the various reasons why people thought. So Russell Young, for example, got it totally incorrect. I'm sorry, and, that's and, not the and, question. I don't well, it is. I'm answering your question. Well, it's not the question got it totally incorrect because he blames all that happens in Gladesville on the council. I'm sorry, that's not my question. So if, if you're not going to answer the question, then we we right. don't need to continue so with that. Could, could, I, could I try? Um, of the people who uh, made submissions supporting option three, how many of those people, I think, is did you canvas for their support for option three? Is that the question, Councillor Collins? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. How many have I spoken to? Yes, community canvas. Perhaps canvas is not the right uh, word. Discuss the issue with. I think one might have been Arthur Johnson, who's here. No doubt you want to cross examine him. Uh, you can do so. Uh, do you feel strongly about it? Otherwise, unless you can point to, oh, Phil and Gloria Jenkins, number two. I spoke to myself about that and my wife. Uh, 
I, I can't see any other. Most of the submissions that were there, I didn't recognise the people at all. But if right. you can help me, please right. put forward no, a name. No, that's, that's fine. fine. Thank you very much. Councillors, any further questions for Mr Jenkins? Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Uh, next speaker we have is Mr Perry Oaken. Welcome, uh, Mr Perry Oaken. Nice to see you again. It's been a while since we've seen you in the Chamber. Absolutely. A speaker in the Chamber, right? Councillors, good evening. I promise that I will speak very briefly. I moved to Gladesville in 2009, of, uh, sorry, 13th of December 2009, nine years tomorrow. When we purchased our house, we did so because we'd missed out an option at other locations, as everyone I'm sure is familiar and has experienced in their time. The rates when we moved in were bang on the nose of $1,000. Uh, sorry, Tom. They were bang on the nose of one thousand dollars. I think they went up by two point seven percent, which would take them to one thousand twenty-seven dollars the next year. That was two hundred and fifty dollars a quarter. I just happened to be going through my statements a couple of years ago, and I found that thirty-first well, of the fifth, twenty twelve, I found an old rates notice which I was running through the shredder copy of it right here, $296 a quarter. That's okay. Seven years later. Thank you, Councillor. Welcome. That's all news. Thank you. Good evening. Sorry. Hello. 31st of August, 2017. Uh, it was due another rates notice. That one turned up in the May, in the mail. $439, so pencil out, it was an increase of 48% in six years. So people criticised me openly when I brought this up at a recent council election. And the reason that I went and spoke about that is because I wasn't the only one. Most of my neighbours and fellow residents, when I canvassed them, they said the same thing. They wanted to know how our rates can go up so much, but where's the money going was the question. Where were the services going? Either we're subsidising who's somebody else in the municipality whose rates have gone down, or the money's going in the toilet. We don't see where the money went. I said, well, I don't know, but that's why I'm running for council. I'd like to know myself. We scroll forward to today, and we're asked to vote on a special rates variation. I jumped on the council's website and used the Excel spreadsheet calculator. Thank you. It was very good, very cute, very nifty. I went and got my land valuation. I put the number in, looked it up from the land titles office, and it estimated that for exactly the same property with exactly the same services, no bigger bin, that. Uh, move to extend with Councillor Miles, Councillor McLaughlin, everybody in favour? Please go ahead. Thank you, councillors. That next year, should you choose option three, my rates will be $2,169.09. Quarterly, that would be $542.27, which represents, with a small round error, an increase in nine years of 117%. That's more than double. Now, some people will say that, yes, but it's over nine years, and yes, it's not a lot of money. If you are a young family, it's a lot of money. My wages haven't gone up 117%, I can guarantee you that. Wages in the IT industry have stagnated. For those in the junior ranks, they have gone backwards. I am just here simply to present the facts to you as they are exposed to me, and I just hope you take those into consideration. Any questions? Thank you very much. Yes, um, Councillor Crasso. Councillor Crasso, would you like to ask the first question? Um, no. Thank you. Thank you for um, your feedback. Um, can I ask you, since you moved to your home, yep. how much your land value has increased in the last nine years? No idea. 
So no, it's not a bankable asset. To me, it's just a home that we live in. Mm. To me, it's worth all the money in the world and I can't put a price on it. Mm. So um, do, do you understand how rates are, how, 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 they are how, how it's done? How My you... understanding, as it was explained to me by the previous general manager, was if we took this piece of paper, and that was our municipality, everyone's, you have a bucket of money that you're allowed to have. And the bucket of money is what the council collects. And I'm happy to be corrected on this, but this is how I understand the process to work. And if you have this valued piece of land over here, you pay that much. But if you have a bigger piece over here, you pay more. And that's fine. So in theory, over time, if the money goes up, everyone's land goes up, it, it wiggles. But that's life in a big city. Real estate prices in Sydney are going up. I appreciate that. But your house has gone up. Your house has gone up. They've all gone up by the same amount. Some have gone up more than others. Some have gone up less than others. But we can confidently say if we read the property press, it's gone up by at least 9.5% over the last nine years. It's doubled. So somebody out there, their property may have gone up more. It may have tripled. It might be a high value asset. If that was the case, and it was still a bucket, relatively speaking, mine should be slightly smaller because the value, my percentage of that piece of paper is less. Therefore, the person with a bigger value who may have gone up more would pay more. That's the way I understand it. I'm happy to be corrected. I'm very happy. Councillor Crossley, does that answer your question? It, it does answer my question. Though, um, I'm, I'm just curious, would you... Would you feel that over the last nine years, property values in, say, Woolwich, which were always quite high, have gone up at the same rate as property values in Bladesville? I, my understanding is the property value, values, I don't know about Woolwich, but I know the suburb of Hunters Hill that extends some way down uh, Alexandra Street, some of those streets before you get to the Woolwich proper, um, they have increased more substantially. So when you look at the heat map, I've done, just out of curiosity, and some friends recently asked if they should be moving to the peninsula and how things perform. We said, let's have a look. The charts show that overall our municipality went up. Certain areas, especially over in Baronia Park area, around Farnell Street and Blackson Street, some of those areas which are referred to as the Golden Square, they have gone up substantially, absolutely astronomically. Um, down in up uh, in percentage terms wise, uh, properties that you previously bought for 800,000, you're now you would get for under 3 million. Councillor, does that answer your question? Down on the peninsula, no, no I haven't finished asking. No, no, but that does answer Did that answer the council's question? I don't see how because I haven't finished talking. But you've answered but you've, the council's question. But you've told me question. what I needed to answer my question. Yeah. It was just a question of you for the councillor to inform the council. So my understanding is that the values down speaking, on if you can do it. have gone uh, up. <laughs> Mr. Perry I'm happy if you continue to continue to answer the question, but could you wrap it up? I just did then when you were speaking over the top of me. Thank you. My I understanding is that down in Woolwich has gone up three times, whereas perhaps down in uh, areas of Gladesville have gone up maybe two and a half times. Okay. If that answers your question. Councillor Sanderson, you've got a question Mr. Mr. Perry. Do you understand yes, the difference between uh, the uh, value that the value of general, general puts on the property and the land? Uh, and the South Market South Price. Yes, I do. One, one, one's a theoretical academic process which is based on valuations of surrounding recent sales, and they say, well, a rising tide in this area lifts all boats. But they don't go the rising tide of Australia, therefore, all the boats have gone up like that. Surrounding properties and like minded properties go up by like that, so therefore, it goes up. Over here, different areas, surrounding tides goes up like that. In addition to that, you can pound on top of that improvements in the properties that may be for density and height. So, yes, they are very different. One's a market value, one's a theoretical exercise, which is meant to reflect the other. Does that answer your question, Councillor? Yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions of Mr. Perry? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good to see you all again. And can I just please take this opportunity? to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Merry Christmas.
Uh, the next speaker we have is Dr. Sharp. Welcome. Nice to see you again. Twice, yes, in, twice, twice in, in three days. That's fabulous. astonishing. That really is astonishing. Um, I put in my, my submission in the nick of time. I must say, you didn't give me very much time. I only got my flyer on the next day, oh. and the website said submissions closed on the Friday. Um, but luckily the fire said it was the Monday. That wasn't very good practice. I apologise for that. Um, as a matter of principle, I, I believe in rates. I think I, I want councils to provide services. And I have no objective law you know, principle to raising the rates as proposed. I don't, I said in my submission I supported option three. I don't support option three on reflection because I don't like the way that the items were bundled in with the rate rise. I support the rate rise, but I don't necessarily support the items listed there. Okay. The problem is that I didn't have any say in those items. Now, the first one that really, really bothers me is the idea that my rate should pay to have 10 Cal Street moved. Cal Street has been sold. It doesn't belong to the It belongs to somebody else. And if the cottage is to be Move, then it's somebody else's um, cost. Um, and I noticed a few things that I feel strongly about missing from that list. Um, there's no mention of care for the bushland, which is greatly under, underfunded at the moment. There's no mention of any of the items in the action plan for the Baronia Park Plan of Management, which was what was that? Only three years ago, only three years ago, there are many items there, some of them listed as high priority, meaning within one year, some medium priority within three to five years, and some of them high priority, sorry, two to three years, high priority was still within five years. Now, there are many items there, some of them are, are minuscule, some of them are, are almost, you know, no cost at all. We really should be looking at those. Otherwise, what was we wasted our money in, in setting up a plan of management and paying consultants to, to establish a plan of management. There's one particular one there that I feel strongly about at Brownie Park, and that was a recommendation to provide playground facilities for older kids. We, I know some of the council people complain about teenagers riding their bikes around and making rough tracks through the bush. But what do we provide for older kids, for teenagers? We provide nothing at all unless they happen to want to play cricket or rugby. And it's there in the plan of management as a stated aim. It has the priority of two to three years, which means it has to be finished within the next um, week. So thank you. I support an increase in rates, providing that there is some transparent process for involving the community in deciding priorities of, of um, how those that increased rates are going to be used. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharp. Uh, I have a question from Councillor Sands. Yes. <coughs> Thank, thanks, Dr. Sharp. I totally agree with your position on the uh, uh, property at uh, 10 Cowell Street. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Uh, I think the important thing is to realise that I think all the plans that the council will make are a uh, living document. There is room for them to uh, change with time. I don't think we will specifically um, uh, have address precisely those items. You, would you be happy? Excuse me, to, would, you, would you be happy? Council, excuse me. But my, my question is. We're just having trouble hearing you. Sorry, my, my, my question to you is with uh, um, knowing that there is that flexibility in the plan, would that make you more comfortable uh, with option three? I would have been more comfortable. You see, the way, the way it's presented is that the option three includes all of those items. That's how it reads as a, doc, as a document. Um, so if that had been made clear, then I, I would be very pleased. Mr. Mayor, if I could through you to the yes. general manager, uh, is I think my assumption about it being a living document and there is flexibility for us to alter the items that come well, in. For the community to have a say in how it be altered. <coughs> Absolutely, I, I agree with that. And, and that's going to be part of the process, I would imagine. So, if, if, uh, I can... Three. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
might actually ask Kathy Goodman to, to talk about how the items were selected because they do link to the asset management plan as well as previous community consultation um, and what the level of flexibility in moving some of those items may be. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Mr. Chair, <coughs> councillors. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Um, thank you for that question because it does need clarifying. Um, and in hindsight, I would have liked to have outlined that within the document. There is flexibility, firstly, in the plan um, to be able to re exhibit that and have some more community consultation on a priority listing. So we can certainly look at that in the new year. I wouldn't suggest that the plan would change dramatically because it is based on Council's existing asset management plan and capital works projects. But in short, yes, we certainly can be a little bit flexible with some of those items. As mentioned, we'd like to have another closer look at 10 Cow Street, and we can also look at Bromia Park because Council has recently received some grant funding from Anthony Roberts for that. Okay, was it <coughs> Thank you. Please come back. Uh, Councillors, are there further questions for Dr. Sharp? Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, this is a pretty important matter. Is there anybody else in the gallery who wished to speak who didn't get their papers in on time? Oh, sir. I put a submission in. You oh. did? You put a submission in. Yeah, yeah it was late, so I assume it got through. It, it did. Yes. I'm sure it would have. It depends how late it was, but I hope it didn't make it. All right, uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor McLaughlin. I was just wondering, what was the submission? Was it in for or against? Against. Okay, thank you. So, councillors, um, if you turn to page 10, the recommendation is on page 10. And I intend to move that recommendation with a memo. But item 2 say the council support option 3 and submit to IPAR. I'll second that. Um, second it, Councillor Williams. My normal practice is to wait until it's been debated, but I think this is of such importance that I need to uh, be quite clear about why I think we should support option three. First of all, I'd like to thank the property owners who responded to our request for, for input into this proposed SRV, and the 400 people who responded to the survey conducted by Iris Research. And I make the point that this was a, an independent survey by IRIS. Rate increases must be kept to a minimum. And I think there's not a councillor sitting at this table that doesn't feel that way. And if they do feel that way, I'd be very happy for them to tell me when I finish speaking. However, rates do need to increase from time to time. It's absolutely essential. But only after we carefully consider that increase. There are many reasons why this is necessary. Clearly the following issues impact upon our financial position. Aging assets and aging infrastructure. Increased maintenance costs that go with those aging assets and infrastructure. And additional community demands. We have community demands for many things during a year. For community functions that we fund, to waive fees for the use of the facilities inside Hunters Hill, the beautification of the area, place development, a big issue for us. We are moving to a different time now, where place development, where we live, how we feel about it is very important. Pedestrian crossings, additional lighting, increasingly litigious society that we live in is, is increasing our cost dramatically and will continue to do so into the future. Certainly we can budget for that into the future, but our costs are increasing in the legal area. Importantly, part of the increase is to reinstate the community services SRV. Further funding, further adding to the burden in recent years, the state government prevented Hunters Hill Council from increasing rates when we would have normally done so. As a result, the rates we were able to generate have not kept pace with our costs. In addition, we have been subject to cost shifting from the state government, and this has been a focus recently of our association, Local Government New South Wales. 
Further fees collected for waste management, further fees collected for waste management are not fully distributed to councils. 18% of the 300 million collected for local, from local government each year is, is not reinvested in recycling and waste management. In addition, over the last 12 months, our costs have increased due to changes since that September date that we often refer back to, uh, the last elections, and we've been emburdened with additional costs. Local planning panels cost us. Our audit fees have increased. We have the same audit company, but our fees have increased dramatically, a government requirement. We have a lot of unrateable property in Huntersville, and that's a really important thing to consider. We have a lot of public housing in Huntersville. A very high proportion of Huntersville is public housing. We certainly have magnificent homes, beautiful waterfront properties, but we have a great deal of social housing. So accordingly, I commend the recommendation to you with the amendment to point two, uh, please support option three. Thank you. Is there anybody who would like to speak against the motion? Councillor Miles. I'll start with some questions, if I may. The projects that will be delivered, which have been asked about from the gallery, how are they identified? How are they identified? Maybe it's a better question for you, Annie. Thanks, Annie. Thank you. Ms. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so when our asset management plans um, were developed, we had an asset engineer come in and value all of our four properties and look at all of the maintenance schedules and standards for each of those properties. That included parks and reserves, roads, footpaths, stormwater drains, etc. Um, from that, the asset management plans were then developed and then capital works programs were then the offshoot of that. Mm -hmm. We have had extensive consultation over the last 10 year period with our facilities levies. Um, we've gone to the community each time with our list of projects and they have been reprioritised on some occasions because of that exhibition period and because of the feedback we've received from the community. So that's in a nutshell how the program's developed. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, Councillor Myers? Thank you. Councillors, uh, would you like to speak against the motion? I'm just at questions at the moment. That's it? Yep. I'm still, 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 like still asking questions. Excuse me. If you have other questions? Yes. Please go ahead. Sorry. Um, the data in this, um, the findings of this survey, uh, page four, uh, on the survey for the bronze reference. Um, Hudders Hill, 265, 65.4% of the sample. Gladesville, 52, 12.8% of the sample. Percent of the sample. Is that proportionate to the population? Are, are you able to answer that question? Yep. Sorry, through you, Mr Mayor, I might ask um, the corporate strategist to answer that, but I believe so. Sorry. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Councillor Miles, Yes, it is reasonably um, proportionate and it seems to be a very similar catchment to what we have done in previous surveys um, with special rate variations and community satisfaction surveys as well. So it's very standard across the board. Um, sometimes there's variation with locale depending on who is home at that particular time of day when phone calls are made. Whilst this sample survey was approximately 404 people, we usually have to call at least seven, 750 people to get the, the 400 snapshots. So there's quite a bit of work that goes into the, the data spread for that. And sorry to keep you there, but okay. um, Hunters Hill, I assume, um, also means Baronia Park. Correct. And other, do you know what other is, which is 5.4% no, of the... No, I take that one on notice okay. for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any further questions? I have no questions, no. Is anybody wishing to speak against the motion? Councillor Miles. Mr Mayor, um, in my time on council, this will be the single largest rate increase uh, that we have voted for or against or had considered. 
10% in one tranche, um, barring the rate peak and the arguments that may be put up for a special rate variation uh, into our uh, backlog for infrastructure and public works, which I understand we still have a substantial budget for unspent. Uh, there is a permanent increase of 3% to our rates. And I understand the arguments about our financial situation and I understand that uh, money is tight at the moment. I don't uh, believe that that is all a result of, of cost shifting. I don't believe that it is all a result of external forces from Hunnison Council. I think that to lump a higher rate on our residents at this point, and we've heard from the gallery tonight, that we can't assume that because we're Hunters Hill, people can pay. So we may as well, what does it matter? It's a couple of dollars a week. There are a lot of people, particularly on the western extremity of Hunters Hill, that for them, this is a large amount of money. A 10% rate increase on top of all the other taxes that they have, they have to pay, and this is the main position that we'll be putting on, on them as a council body, is not insubstantial. 10% increase in the amount of money that they have to pay year on year is substantial. And I don't think we can assume that because we're Hunters Hill, people can just afford it. And that's a lot of the arguments that I've heard. Um, For this to be substantiated in any way, we'd have to say that we're going to rapidly improve on the infrastructure that we're going to be giving to the community. But by the admission of this report, if we don't levy this rate onto our ratepayers, it says that our infrastructure is going to deteriorate. Now, if our infrastructure is going to deteriorate, as a result of us not having a rate increase, we have to ask ourselves what's happening with operations. If, if we have to increase to keep up a minimum standard, then we have to ask ourselves, look, look inward and say, is there a problem with what we're doing? I've argued this before, but uh, never has it been brought to council a rate increase of this quantum in my almost seven years, six and, six and a bit years, um, I don't think that it's necessary. I think the rate peak, option one, should be the option that we go for, with the potential for option two, and I understand the arguments around it, but option two can be looked at when our current state, uh, our, our current SRV funds have been either expended or at, uh, at a, a level where they're going to be expended in that financial year. Then we can apply for another special rate variation for infrastructure. The permanent increase of 3% is something that I would never support because it goes to the way that we manage our operations as a council. And I understand the arguments for and against and I understand that you know, we have a new general manager and it's not anyone's fault. We just need to deal with this issue as we are presented with it now. And the answer to this problem is not to perpetually increase rates. The answer to this problem is to look at how we raise revenue from other sources and how we manage our operations better so that rates increases are not, especially at this quantum of almost 10%, are not something that we have to put on the table year on year. That's my piece. I would opt for option one. Uh, I will foreshadow uh, the, in the event that this uh, doesn't get up, that my preference would be for uh, point two to uh, reflect that the council support option one and submit that to our part. Oh, I'll just capture that uh, foreshadowed motion. Uh, 
If I could say thank you, Councillor, I think you raised some important points. Thank you. from what Councillor Miles has just talked about. Um, I'm a bit confused. Could somebody clarify for me, is the 3% in option three a permanent rate rise? I understood special rate variations were a temporary measure. Um, is that the case with uh, the 3% in item three? Yeah. Okay. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it, it, Special variations can be uh, on a per for a permanent uh, on a permanent basis, or they can be for a length of time. In in this instance, we're looking at a, a ten year program for the community facilities and a permanent operational increase of three percent. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor, would you like to speak? Oh, sorry, excuse me. Do we have a speaker for the motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If someone else is going to go before me, I'll uh, speak at this stage. Uh, I, I, I have read every one of those uh, submissions, and uh, I share uh, and I assure uh, Councillor Collins that there's been no uh, co you know, collusion between myself and Mr. Jenkins. It is quite remarkable that his conclusions and mine are, are, are quite uh, quite similar. There certainly is a lack of understanding about uh, what cost shifting involves. And uh, you know, it has to be noted that uh, at the present time, 15% of our uh, income goes on items that have been shifted to, to local government. Uh, there are, you know, there are also uh, errors and, you know, uh, where, you know, understandably people are not happy about having to pay more more rates. I completely accept that. If it were possible not for that to not to happen, well, I'd be go, go along with that. But uh, the arguments we've heard, I don't think anyone has really uh, identified where we can save costs. If we, we if uh, if someone could bring something definite, for, and I, I know, councillor. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> look, I know, I know we get all these suggestions, but at the end of the day, what it comes down to, our long-term plan must be to uh, increase our, uh, our, our return on the assets that we do have. In order for that to happen, they have to be properly maintained. Uh, I think also there was a lack of understanding, which you, you've uh, identified that uh, you know the, the uh, one of the components is in fact just returning to what this council has traditionally had and renewed every ten years, and that's been essential to look after our community facilities. Uh, I've also also in, in Dr. Sharp's address we've uh, seen that there is flexibility, or it's, it's been well, my belief that there is flexibility has been uh, been uh, confirmed. And uh, I think it's important that, that all of the planning documents we have, and I always had a, 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 a thing that was run by uh, Property New South Wales and UTS last night, quite interesting, but the emphasis there was that all of our planning documents are things which will have, well, they are referred to as living documents, as things that will d develop as time goes on. And uh, so we, we're not absolutely tied. Certainly we've got the asset issues we've got to look at, but. Uh, Yes, there are many things that we, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 there is flexibility in the system, in short. Uh, the other thing I was going to highlight is there has been discussion about the increasing rates. I did have a look today at the uh, at councillors, or the councillors' uh, 
rate calculator and for the uh, average uh, land value in uh, Huntersville at the present time, uh, option uh, three would actually come out of a, a rate of, or a total annual rate of $1,837.53. If you would apply the formulas and ride, the amount would be $2,221.63. So um, the, the argument that if there had been, and this came up quite a bit in some of the submissions, the argument that that if there had been a uh, an amalgamation, this would have saved rates. Yes, the people would have been protected for the four years that the rates were 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 were, were held. But after that time, uh, I'm sure there would have been uh, increases in rates for our residents living in areas, uh, particularly uh, around the boundary with uh, with Ride, where uh, you know at the present time, two two houses rate. Value, similar values, the rate on the right side will be considerably higher than ours. Um, the other thing I'd like to note, there were a couple of items in Monday night's agenda which unfortunately because of the way we had to rush, rush through the items didn't, uh, didn't come to light or we didn't have the opportunity to discuss and one of them, Mr Mayor, I'd like to thank you for your, uh, your uh, uh, minute on the, uh, the waste levy. Now this is a classic. Um, <coughs> Huntersville Council paid uh, $205,739 in waste levy. We only received uh, $59,652 uh, of that back. Uh, I had a look at a report that was done by local government New South Wales. At the present time, only 18% of the $300 million collected from local government for, for in, in waste levies is actually, actually uh, goes into uh, or reinvested in uh, recycling and waste management, with the rest of it just disappearing into, into uh, government coffers. Now, the result of this is that local government is effectively being made a collection agency for state taxes by this state government, or probably successive state governments, I'll well, keep it apolitical. But, uh, that is the case, and this is the thing that looks bad about rate increases. It shouldn't be happening. This government has to, whichever government we have after March, has to address this issue. If we're going to have a rates uh, or we're going to have a waste levy, that money should be going into waste. Other items, as I've already said, I support Dr. Sharp's position that we shouldn't be paying for. Uh, the, the removal of uh, the uh, cottage at 10 uh, Cowell Street. I think that's a matter that uh, anyone who happens to develop that site will have to uh, uh, have to deal with. Uh, that should be not, not be at the cost of our residents. Uh, to, down to the telephone polling, I, I agree. There's, there's probably more information given with that, so people are probably able to reflect uh, more carefully on it. Uh, I th think probably we would have got more people accepting of option three. I mean, I think it was 33% anyway, uh, and, and 37 for, if I remember correctly, for option two. Um, I think it was a little bit unfortunate that the top of the uh, asset list, because I think it was done in alphabetical order, was a was a dunny in in uh, in uh, uh, Fig Tree Park, but. Uh, even so, I, 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 my feeling is that there is strong community support for this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will conclude. Uh, I think the uh, I don't know how, how many others have looked at this document that uh, local government New South Wales has uh, has produced about the impact of cost shifting on uh, local government in New South Wales. I think one of the important things we need to do out of this process is clearly. We need to educate the, the community a bit better about some of the issues. Uh, I'd be very delighted to assist you, Mr Mayor, in, in any messages we can get out to uh, explain what some of the problems in this area are. Thank you, Governor. I think we'll do that as a council either way in the future. Thank you for your suggestion. Does anybody would like to speak against? Do you have a question? But just a, um, gram a grammatical correction. On page two, sorry, the third paragraph down, Council considered that the meeting 4447 held 0 September 
I just check on the new version that's still zeros and ten. Sorry, I just noticed that. I'm sorry, I've missed it. Could you point out that again? Page two. Page two. Third paragraph down after yes. meeting 4447, okay. zero September. We've meant that. Thank you very much for pointing that. We have a speaker who'd like to speak against the motion, please. Councillor Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, look, I want to start by saying that the dire financial position we're in at the moment is not a sudden thing. It's been, it's been creeping up on us for uh, many years now. And it's not because we've been spending too much maintaining our assets. Uh, we haven't been spending anywhere near enough. And we still haven't been managing to balance the budget. And I think the staff have done an excellent job um, working under the circumstances in, in which they operate. I think it's, I think it's tough. Um, they have a limited pot of money to work with and they do it very well. And I also recognise that the general manager's only been here for two months and I believe he's making some good inroads into fixing some of the problems here. But uh, as a council, we have not led the kind of financial and operational reform that we, we should have done. Uh, we have wasted countless hours in this chamber listening to councillors grandstanding, nitpicking, and debating motions that serve egos and not the community. Two days ago, we were in this chamber trying to plan a party uh, that the community never asked for. And here we are, trying to increase rates by 10%. I think we should be thinking of ourselves more as a board of directors than a party planning committee. And I'm at a loss to understand how it is, with the expertise we have around this table, uh, all of us have something to offer. With the expertise around this table, we are in this situation. And having been here for more than a year, uh, I can't see any impact on revenue or expenses um, that, that we as a council have led any reform in. I think we've failed the community in this respect, and um, now here we are asking them to bail us out. So, look, I voted against a pay rise for us six months ago because I didn't think we deserved it. And I was adamant that I thought we should balance the budget before we bump up our fees. And I think we as councillors have to acknowledge that we have, we have failed um, to execute the kind of reform that this council desperately needs. And I think, whilst I do not support this levy, uh, special rate variation. Of course, the, the rate peg, which is inflation, we can't control inflation. I don't support this motion at all, um, but I think if it is going to move forward, then I think we need to seriously reflect on the fact that we need to look at expenses. And I think uh, we're gonna take this to the community. Uh, I would like to suggest that if we're going to go with a that we actually reduce our councillor fees and the mayoral fee by whatever the special rate variation is chosen tonight. I'll second. I'd like to put that as a motion if I can. For shadow motion? No. Amendment. An amendment. An amendment. You would like to make an amendment? Yes. I think it's quite different to the motion we're debating tonight. And because it's quite different, I don't think he can do that. I don't think he can do that. I'm happy to debate it another <coughs> time. I it's, it's, a worthwhile, it's a worthwhile point to consider. But I don't think you can change the motion to something which is completely different with to the heart of the motion. With respect, Mr Mayor, I've seen a lot uh, of amendments uh, in this chamber before that are very far removed from what was originally suggested. So with respect, I think uh, it is quite fair to put this tonight. I think the people would, of Hunters Hill would, would appreciate it. Um, and I don't think we should have anything to hide. So I would, uh, with your uh, permission, Mr. Mayor, put that to you. Um, I think it's um, outside the terms of what we're dealing with tonight. 
If it would help, Mr. Mayor, point of order, because this is not an issue related to the published papers. No, it doesn't seem to be to me. Um, it's not directly in opposition to the motion, but it is different to the motion, quite different to what we're discussing tonight. The papers are very specific as to what this meeting is about, and it's an extraordinary meeting, and we're not entertaining, from my perspective, issues outside of that. I'd be very happy, Council Collins, to take this to our very next meeting, put it on the table and discuss it. Um, and we have a bit of a chance to uh, look at the reasons for that and develop our arguments and think about it ahead of time. So I'm very happy to bring it to the next meeting. Um, but not tonight. Okay, well, if I can't put that motion, then... Um... With respect, Mr Mayor. Please no, speak to Councillor um, Miles. If Councillor Collins is suggesting that um, uh, as a council we um, acknowledge our failure to address this issue and uh, make a gesture to the community in cutting our councillor rates as a result of uh, <coughs> this rate increase uh, and it is put and accepted and seconded as a motion, I don't see how we can not debate it. To be fair, under, under the Act, I think that, that, that Councillor Collins is completely in order. I don't think that's, I'm happy to debate it, um, but I don't think that's what we're dealing with tonight. We're dealing with something quite different. Um, it's not completely in opposition to the original uh, purpose of the meeting, and, but it, it is something we consider on a regular basis. I'm happy to take some advice on it, and I will from the general manager and get an opinion. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it, um, it is my, my belief is it's not in direct opposition to what is before the council, and therefore it would be a matter for the council to decide if you wish to to add it to the recommendation. All right. So, thanks for suggesting it. Thanks, Councillor Miles. Um, we'll add it to. Uh, you want to do this as a uh, an amendment. Uh, uh, yes, a number, a number five. Alright, stand corrected. Thank you. Despite how this falls, we'll have another opportunity to do this. <laughs> so move Councillor Collins, second and Councillor Miles. Have a question? Are we allowed to have questions of uh, I'll ask Councillor Miles to speak to the motion. He's uh, called. No, it's the questions amendment. of the of Councillor Collins. Are we are allowed to ask questions of Councillor Collins in relation to some of the points he raised? I'll ask him to speak to his motion first, and then uh, we can have some questions and debate over it. be reduced at the same rate as any special rate variation implemented in this motion. So, <coughs> that sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, look, I've pretty much said what I want to say. I, I just honestly believe that we can't just um, get paid to turn up here. We need outcomes, and I, I don't think where we are right now um, 
asking for more money is a good outcome. I haven't seen sufficient progress, in, in my opinion, uh, in the leadership of the, uh, the financial and operational reform in this council that I would like to have seen. Um, and I think it has been a product of this council um, uh, not working as well together as it should be. All right, thank you. Do you have a question? Can I ask my question? Well, there's a question in Council Miles. Uh, no, I have a question uh, for Council Collins. Um, you've been in the press a lot lately talking about library services and how we need to reduce them. Um, you're on a library committee uh, or a working party? A library committee, yes. Okay, how long has that been formed for? It's a very good question. When was it formed? Uh, it's been a few years, so certainly. Oh, sorry, I'm not a, no, I'm not on the library. The library, oh, the work library party. working party. I haven't been to any meetings of the library working party. There, there, hasn't there, hasn't been been any. Any there haven't been any. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, you were wanting to drive library services or an improvement in library services. Okay. No, I, I, question, I just, just take the question. Can we just take as a question. Yep. Okay. How long has it been in place? Yeah, okay, so um, absolutely right. I am on the library committee. Um, I am, um, well, I thought I was on the property committee, which was formed in June. Um, that hasn't actually had a meeting yet. The library committee, uh, that hasn't had a meeting yet. Um, I was on the audit committee uh, when I was uh, you know, appointed first meeting, I think, of council, um, and it took a year to get a meeting. Uh, this is exactly what I'm talking about. The property committee um, should have been up and running within a month or two. We were there to look for opportunities to find revenue. If we'd have met and found some things, perhaps at this point we'd already have revenue to cover this. But why has the library committee met? Very good question. Why are driving it? I'm not driving it, no. No, but you can call committee oh, meetings. Did you? Wait, so I don't call I, meetings. I don't have a fair yeah. question to Councillor Collins. Yeah, no. If it hasn't met, then we probably should have met over agree with Councillor Collins. All right. Um, um, if, but if you if we're talking about the library, I, I think I was quite. <laughs> I think I was very clear when this came up for review. We we had a meeting about this issue in, in January. I thought we were all in agreement that something was going to be done. Nothing was done, and then everyone just wanted to kick the can down the road, and nothing was done. I I, I I'm very clear that. Uh, I have been trying to reduce the overspend on the library without reducing service but pay our fair share. We have been overcharged to the tune of $350,000. That's a fact. Um, that's proven. Uh, and I've been rallying against that. But unfortunately, I've been a bit of a lone voice in that one. Um, and that's one of uh, perhaps I haven't rallied hard enough. And so I submit that, um, you know, we failed on that as well. All right, thank you. Uh those wishes to speak against the amendment? Could I ask a question to Councillor Collins? Uh, through yes. The uh, are, you go, are you interested in speaking well, against the amendment? Or I, I will. Let's, let's, the not, let's, 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 let's speak against it and uh, perhaps the question will fall out. But please ask the question, but let's, let's debate like, the matter. If, if you like, I'll speak on the matter. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'm uh, a bit uh, amazed by Councillor Collins' uh, amendment. Uh, and also the allegation against other councillors. I mean, I think uh, I've certainly contributed a lot, I think, uh, to various things that this council has done. Uh, the work we did as a, as a council has achieved as be the best possible outcome that we could have got uh, under, the, under the circumstances for, for a local planning panel. Uh, I drove the, the, the motion. We took the Australian Local Government Association. Clearly, reform is necessary in that that, uh, that area, so that uh, council uh, is not a uh, purely a, a creature of the state. Uh, more recently, I, I <coughs> developed a, a comprehensive motion on uh, complying development. I think I've contributed significantly to this council. And I tell you what, it's the poorest job paying job I've ever had, but I love doing it because I love doing things for this community. Um, in terms of savings, I mean, Council, Councillor uh, Collins has frequently said, oh, there are all savings all over the place. 
No, and, but he hasn't identified a single one, apart from a half-baked notion that somehow or other we're going to go to the city of Ryde and say, oh, cut the, cut the, the library uh, fee in, in half, and we'll still take the same service. Uh, mate, don't you know anything about contract law? Councillor, Councillor, please, please don't make this a personal issue. Uh, I apologise, Mr Mayor, but uh, I do get a, a little bit uh, uh, concerned when Councillor Collins, uh, is, you know, runs off to the press and, again, uh, the motion that I put uh, to do with... Uh, Complying development that was incredibly well thought out research proce process and interestingly at the, the function I was at last night where we had people from the Department of Planning uh, I had had discussions with some of the councillors from other councillors that, that night and there was some discussion about it and at one point someone from the Department of Planning actually said uh, that uh, you know, it, it, for councils that can, that can produce their their housing quota, yes, they would consider things like uh, giving councils a say where they would apply uh, or, or where complying development would apply in their areas. And, you know, this was shot down by the... or, or you know, discredited by these people. Councillor Collins went off to the press. He criticised the Councilor, least important... Councilor, please section. don't make this a personal... I, I am just, I apologise again, but I make the point that Councillor Collins has broken ranks with this council. I think it's very important, as I indicated earlier, that a lot of our material is developed through the cooperation we generally get, a majority of 5 2 on, 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 on most issues. Uh, and if when that happens, I'm solid with it. Now, um, I. I don't see that there's a reason for fees to be cut. I mean, in my own case, I paid three and a half thousand dollars to be elected. I paid four thousand dollars for a course, uh, which gave me the ability to produce that motion on complying development. Uh, I, I think I'm, you know, I don't see any reason, and I, I'm sure you would, would, Mr. Mayor, for your your fees to be cut, you for the time that you put in for the. For the meagre salary or, or meagre, meagre fees that you're paid, I think the the, the, the uh, you know I resent the the, the allegation that's made about this the, the, you know the effect of the tardiness of the council, and uh, I would like uh, so I, I therefore think that the uh, councillor uh, Collins uh, amendment should be uh, rejected. Thank you. Who would like to speak? For the amendment, please. Councillor Miles. No surprises there. Um, this isn't a personal um, attack on anyone. I think that what this would be is a, is a gesture by the councillors elected to this body that we understand that increasing rates and, hey, I spoke before, I'm not in favour of increasing rates at anywhere near 10%. But if we will increase rates, we'll put our money where our mouth is and we'll take a cut. Now, it's not a lot of money, really. It's not, it's not a lot of money. We're not, I don't think one councillor in this room is in here for the money. And God help us if we are. But um, I think where rubber meets road, we're telling our community through this amendment that we can, we understand we are imposing on you uh, a substantial increase in your rates. We hear you. We'll take a cut. I think that that is a fair proposition. Understand there will be different views around the room and understand that um, uh, you know, uh, this has been brought up now but I still think that uh, in terms of how this rate increase lands out there in, in the Hunters Hill community and in Gladesville and Baronia Park and Henley, this gesture would be appreciated because it says that, that we'll put our money where our mouth is and we mean what we say and, and you know, we know that this is going to cause a little bit of 
distress. All right, thank you, Councillor Miles. Anybody wishing to speak against the amendment? I'll have a go, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> um, I share <coughs> Councillor uh, Sanderson's concerns that uh, I don't appreciate being denigrated in this chamber by people that that um, I I see as uh, um, making hollow gestures. Um, to me, councillors work very hard, and they don't get paid much for it, and they don't expect much for it. But I don't accept that we're in a dire financial situation. Far from it. And the over-exaggeration of that by our two Liberal colleagues here, um, who the first time I've been on a council where it's been politicised by party politics is of great concern to me. And I think this is something that we should be debating at another time about whether or not we, we uh, reduce or, or delete, in this case, be deleting any remuneration for its councillors. Another important point is Huddersfield Council is not alone in this. I went to the Labor Government Conference in Albury, and in Albury, every council was complaining about the issues that you, Mr Mayor, quite appropriately and very eloquently put. The pressures that are being put on local government <coughs> by external bodies, whether they're insurance, whether they're state government or whatever, we seem to be the dumping ground for a whole range of expenditure that our ratepayers shouldn't have to be paying. So don't blame the council. The problem is external to council. If we didn't have to pay all this money out on, on uh, local planning panels through the, the Sydney, Greater Sydney Planning Commission, we're now going to do all these LEPs and all these statements of significance and stuff all take money out of the pot. As you rightly say, Mr Mayor, we're in a situation where legal expenditure is, is increasing. But that's because there's lack of clarity in the planning process. And there's these obscene and absurd policies which government's been put upon us, complying development for one, that is, is diverting resources away. So everywhere we look, Resources are being diverted away from this council and our community. It is not unreasonable for this council to seek a rate variation. Most other, if not all, Sydney councils are doing the same, no matter how big or small. And I got a rate notice, I got the same, virtually the same thing that I got in Hunter Hill for a property I've got in North Sydney. They're doing exactly the same thing for exactly the same reasons. It doesn't matter, it's not an issue of scale. It's an issue of external pressures over a very long period of time. When I was back in council, I'm back in the, the early 90s, rate pegging came in and it squeezed local government for the last 30 years and still does. And all these other things that are put on council. So to me, I don't think we're in a dire situation. I think we're in a situation with a new general manager with new vision, leadership, can lead us forward and find uh, the necessary uh, resources for us to deliver on what we want to do. The community wanted Hunters Hill to be retained and there is a cost in that and so we do have to bear that. But I don't accept this sort of chatter that I'm not contributing to, to Hunters Hill through this council. <coughs> I find it offensive and I think people should grow up and should um, work more cooperatively around this table. Thank you, Councillor. So, anybody would like to speak for the amendment? Right reply. Uh, yeah, just briefly, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I would like to, if I wasn't clear, look, I think we have all done um, great things. Uh, my point is that we've not done everything. Um, we are in a dive financial situation. That's why we're doing this massive rate increase. Uh, if we're not, then let's just not do it. Um, 
a 10% rate increase means that there is a problem. So, it, and this, this is not a hollow gesture by any means. Uh, I, I think it sends an important message to the community that we acknowledge that we haven't done everything that we should um, and we're going to try harder. And you know what, we could, uh, once the, once we can get rid of the special rate variations, maybe then we can uh, uh, you know, put them back. But, but at this point in time, I think uh, uh, as the leaders of this council, we should, we should shoulder some of the burden here. Thank you, Councillor Collins. Any further clarifications? Not I'll put the motion. Those in favour, excuse me, the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment. Those against the amendment. Would you like your names noted on that? Thank you. Sure. We go back to the uh, original motion, and I think we, uh, I think Councillor Collins, you used your time against oh. to suggest an amendment. So we're back to uh, those who want to speak for the original motion. Councillor Williams. Mr. Mayor, I covered a lot of the territory that I was going to cover in the previous uh, address I gave, but I, I think there are still a couple of issues that, that need to be. Um, clarified in this debate. Again, it's this emotive language that people use that I think is totally inappropriate. Councillor Miles is talking about a 10% increase where he personally has agreed the 2.7 is essential and the 4.4 is essential. So I that's 7%. Well, okay. Whatever you said, you said you would accept or you would work. Yeah. So we're talking about 7% is already agreed around the table. As I'm sure the Liberal colleagues would agree with uh, Councillor Miles, his colleagues. So therefore we're talking about a 3% increase. In my mind, is validated by the opportunity for us to do special things for our community. We're not just going to fritter away on daily things. We're going to put it into meaningful projects. And I do agree, we probably have to revisit some of these projects. I would find it incredibly unacceptable if we were to use this money for um, moving that cottage, as I've mentioned on many, many occasions before. So I think there's some fine tuning need to be done. But we're not just spending this money on ourselves as councils. We're not spending this money on um, salaries for staff or trips overseas or whatever, it's going to be specified and Council will be monitored on its performance for its delivery of these items. So I think it's reasonable. I think it's important that we provide services for our community. I don't think it's out of step with local government in general. As I said, the conference, everybody at that conference was on about the cost shifting, about the the impost of rate pegging, the impost of uh, endless amounts of requirements both from state and federal government and some industry groups on local government. Waste management is another classic external issue. So to me, Mr Mayor, this is not out of the, bot out of the ordinary. This is something that we as a community council are putting to our community or have put to our community. They've accepted it in the past. I think it's been put in a very rational and reasonable way. They've been consulted. You'll always get in a democracy people arguing against it. You'll always get in democracy people arguing for it. But I'm convinced by the consultation we've done here and the desire of this community to have a viable and productive council, um, these are accepted in our community as being reasonable. And therefore, I think we should move forward with it and um, the community will get the benefits of it. There are a lot of initiatives that will come over the next six to 12 months by this council to make sure that these rate, um, special rate variations aren't a permanent fixture in our business. They are needed at the moment and I think we should um, agree to go forward with them. 
Thank you, Councillor Williams. So anybody would like to speak against the motion? Anybody would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Crossall. I would. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm always conscious in council of not repeating what other councillors have said, because <coughs> that's part of the democratic and cooperative debate is that we hear each other's voices. Uh, so I won't bore you, but I will say that I agree wholeheartedly with everything that the Mayor, Councillor Sanderson and Councillor Williams have said, and I anticipate I'll potentially agree with <laughs> Councillor McLaughlin shortly. So that said, I won't go into those things, but I hold those points. What I would like to say is that I apologise to our community for the perception, if it's a perception, and for the reality that we as a council have not communicated well enough. Particularly before this month, we needed to deliver education around how rates are measured, uh, because even our intelligent and articulate speaker tonight, Mr Oakden, uh, didn't really seem to have a full grasp on, on how rates are measured and how they go up and who delivers those increases. We needed to educate our residents comparing with our neighbouring councils because some of the feedback in here suggested that we are a very expensive council. We needed more communication about what we have delivered with the residence rates in the past and what we continue to deliver. And we needed to share information around our existing cost-cutting efficiencies and collaborations for greater delivery and capacity. <coughs> All of these greater efficiencies are happening now and will continue to happen as our review of our operations and spending uh, continue and as our property committee identifies opportunities to generate greater income. None of this has clearly been communicated well enough because too many residents and too many people speaking tonight and the voice on the ground says so. All of that said, the overwhelming majority in those 400 phone uh, interviews <coughs> said they are happy to support a rate rise. Some of them in the phone interviews and in the submissions said they want to support it and they want to know where it's going. They want better communication. So as a councillor, as I've promised since the day I got on to council 15 months ago, and continue to promise and push for, I will continue to push for better communication. So, what I think our residents have said is that they want delivery now, regardless of as much as we are currently delivering, they want delivery now. They want our daughters, our sons, our ageing and our disabled to have immediate access to accessible and inclusive facilities, including our town hall. They want an improved and contemporary smart interface with their council. They want us to fight the necessary battles to preserve our heritage, our tree canopy, and our safety as we walk and ride on our streets. And they want it now. So yes, our council will continue to work on delivering greater efficiencies. And I'm proud to say that this year, I think we are making headway into that. But our residents want this now and we can only do that with a rate rise. With option three we will be embracing the opportunity not only to deliver those nows and to grow opportunities for greater security in the future, we will be improving the standard of living and the subsequent property values of our residents. We'll be doing it soon and we'll be communicating it and we need it now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak against the motion? Anybody else wishing to speak for the motion? Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you. Following on from what Councillor Crasso was saying, I'm not sure, I don't want to repeat myself too much, but I just did want to point out some of the um, data that Councillor Williams rose as a result of his uh, attendance at the local government conference. And that is that. Um, 14 councils have applied and have already been approved for IPART um, 
SRVs, and they range from about 5 to 15% with about the average around about 7 to 9. So again, it's not unusual. Now, those councils are mostly unamalgamated councils, and that is because um, amalgamated councils were not uh, able to... Precluded. Precluded from uh, putting in SRVs because they had been given bucket loads of money to amalgamate. Um, there... So there's been, uh, there's still 14 councils, so sorry, 11 councils have been approved, but 14 councils are, have uh, applied for special rate variations. So that's, what's that, 20, 25 councils who are putting in those variations. Um, I absolutely agree with everything that my fellow councillors, Williams and Crassoy, Sanderson and Bennett have said. And I do agree with some of the things that uh, Councillor Miles and Colin, Councillor Collins have said as well. Um, but, you know, I sat at a table recently at a precinct meeting for Gladesville where, and you sat with me too, Councillor Crasso, where uh, the residents had those rate increase brochures in front of them and they were there to support option three. Um, everyone around that table brought them along to say that they wanted to. They may not have put in a submission. To me, that was... Um, was a lovely indication of how our community feels about uh, maintaining. They wanted it because they wanted to maintain Hunters Hill and its services and the way that it is. Um, so having said that, I see us moving forward and I see this as a real opportunity to reset and reshape this council. And if we do that in turn, we reshape our entire community. We have a new general manager in place um, and she's doing a fantastic job. She's reshaping the organisation um, and she's bringing fresh eyes to everything. Um, and we want to support her as much as we can as a council and a community uh, because I think we're going to achieve some really great priorities in the next few years. Um, that is, they're going to make a huge difference to Hunters Hill. But we do need, and we need that underlying income stream that will help us support all of those things that Councillor Williams and Councillor Collins put in their election material, those big ticket items that we all agree on. But we need an income stream sitting underneath that will help those things come to fruition. We can't do that without that. We need those big ticket items, absolutely. But we absolutely have to have basic services met in the meantime. So I support option three. Um, and I know that the community feels the same way. I'm absolutely sure of it, that they can put their trust in us on this issue. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I think I know which way this is going to go, but I'd like to say before we, uh, before I, as part of my right of reply, um, I think that we, that there's been some very good points raised by Councillor Miles and Councillor Collins, and we need to think about those points they raised. I can tell you, as Councillor McLaughlin can attest to, for the five years of the previous council, every year we looked hard for those revenue raising opportunities. One of the reasons that paid parking was installed in two locations, and we have a number of councils that are not happy about that yet, was that we were desperate to find some revenue raising opportunities. And, the, and we said that at the time. We didn't hide it. We said this is to raise revenue. And we did that because we were looking desperately to find opportunities to raise revenue. We could have sold off pieces of property uh, and we may have ended up in the same position to the state governments in the moment, at the moment with their holes and wires matter. But we could have sold off property. I'm always reminded, uh, and the general manager reminded me of this today, if we sell the farm, we have no crops to sell the year later. So we have to be careful with what we do with the things we own that we can sell off. We did look for five years for alternate ways to raise revenue. We looked every year as a council. Perhaps we didn't do a good enough job, but we looked every year. Other sources of revenue are hard to find. 
I don't want this council to live hand to mouth, waiting for grants to come, hoping that grants come. I put in two letters to the minister this week and, and kindly he responded and said he would look at those and consider those two requests for some assistance. But I don't want to live hand to mouth to the, to the state government in the future. If we don't find those revenue raising opportunities in the future, if we don't increase our rates, we risk our independence as a council. Regardless of what you think about the amalgamation issue, I'm really proud of the fact that seven councillors that sat here and debated this tonight live in this municipality and seven councillors in this chamber tonight will make a decision about this municipality. Had we gone down a different track, maybe one of us would have made that decision, not seven of us. And I think the more people in this room who can make a decision about our future, the better for us. I'm glad we don't always agree. I'm glad I've had disagreements with some of you councillors because that says that democracy is working well. I'm glad I've had disagreements with members of the public. It says our, de our democracy is working well. Fortunately, those people still speak to me and fortunately you still speak to me. We will continue to have disagreements. I hope they're for the best of our community. Before I put the motion, I would like to thank our corporate strategist, Annie Goodman, for the work you've done. <laughs> the enormous amount of work in it. You have other duties, I know, and you've taken up some additional duties in community service. This must have been very difficult to fit it in, so thank you very much. We really appreciate your work. Uh, I commit to bringing the, the issue of councillor pay and mayor's pay back to a meeting in the, in the near future. Councillor, we can consider that then. I think it is a different matter to what we dealt with tonight, but I'm glad under advice uh, we dealt with it tonight, but I'm happy to bring it back for another thing. It will give us all a chance to revisit it, think about it, think about what our views are on it, and perhaps argue it in a more constructive way. I'll put the motion. Is there a question? Sure, division on this. Thank you. I'll put the motion. Those in favour of the motion that's on the screen. Is the motion on the screen clear to everybody? Yes. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? That's carried. Thank you very much, councillors. Um, I think that's the only matter. Is there any other business we need to do with tonight you can think of? Uh, would you like to? Um, uh, we have the last meeting tonight for <laughs> Deborah McFadden. Um, Deb, you've done a great job. Everybody that's worked with you has said you're a wonderful accountant, including Mr. Collins. We've had him say what a great accountant you are. So it comes from Richard Quinn, it comes from previous mayors and councillors. You made a great contribution. And I wish you well. Thank you. I'm sorry you're leaving. Yeah, thanks. Did you, would you like to say something to me? Through you, Mr. Mayor, just to acknowledge Deborah's been here for 20, 23 years um, and given 23 years to the community of Hunters Hill. And I'd echo the Mayor's um, and probably Councillor Collins's. Um, sentiment in, in the, the quality and the value that Deborah's brought to the financial management of the council. So we, we wish you all the very best in retirement and um, safe travels. Thank you. Sure, the best. I just want to say that um, what, what a pleasure it has been to work with you. I, I want to state on the record that um, I think you're uh, one of the smartest, if not the smartest accountants I've ever come across. Um, you are amazing the way you are across the numbers, and we are really losing a, um, a valuable member of staff tonight. So. I'm just a HR person, but that's Councillor Collins' expertise, so he's a better judge than me, so thank you. Uh, only uh, two things left to do is wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thank you to the people who came to speak tonight, and uh, I close the meeting at. Uh, 6.40 p.m.